I hope it happens. <laughs> I'm a big fan of getting rid of high dose melphalan eventually. You know, I think I will say that I think high dose melphalan is one of the best therapies we have available right now, especially worldwide. So if we talk about access, not just in the US, but everywhere else, it is probably the cheapest way to get myeloma controlled for the majority of patients for the longest time, right? So, and nothing's beat it so far with no matter what we, you know, what studies we do. I think the side effects that patients have, um, which again, mortality is not very high, but you know, patients do get GI toxicity at times, they're hospitalized sometimes, we can do it outpatient sometimes, they don't, they can't work during that time, um, um, people can get chemo brain, you know, these types of things that I think um, it's real chemo, unlike some of our other therapies. And so, and, and the chemo part is what kills the myeloma in the stem cell, so they just actually, you know, they, they um, it's an auto, so it's not for actual myeloma treatment. So scientifically, what makes it so amazing to have maybe CAR-T take over one day, you're actually taking the cells, and now it's the cells that are going after, right? It's not chemo. You're actually using a personalized treatment instead of a big whack-a-mole with the, the melphalan. Um, you're, you're using someone's T cells to find the myeloma. So T cells can get there. So scientifically, it makes a lot of sense, and I think that's what patients think about, and they're like, I, that, that's why I would like CAR-T instead. It's more precision medicine in a sense. I think we have to prove that it works better still. So um, as much as the data for relapsed refractory patients has been pretty phenomenal, and we haven't seen anything like this before, where patients have a year or two years longer with a, a progression-free survival and really relapsed refractory. Um, however, we don't have data back yet from uh, the earlier lines, right? Having a study that actually will show transplant versus CAR-T, which I know are being planned, are highly anticipated, and I'm really hopeful that we'll see um, a difference in either um, efficacy, maybe cure, right? That'd be great if we can cure patients, or if we can at least have similar or better responses, but maybe better quality of life or something else that toxicity-wise is less, I think that would be fantastic to show and, and that would help outcomes for patients. Um, the other way to think about it is instead of transplant, can you consolidate after transplant? And hopefully um, some of the KARMA2 data that looked at that, um, we'll have data for that soon and we'll see if that maybe for some patients would be the better way to do it.